Hello once again internet, me Carmen coming right back at you and in this video I want to talk about the recent ruling made by the US Court of Appeals in the District of Columbia over net neutrality. Now for those of you who don't know, net neutrality essentially means that okay just imagine all the websites on the internet that you are able to get equal access to them. You shouldn't have to pay more to access them, they shouldn't be throttled because the company doesn't like them or taken off, etc, etc. It had to do with a set of regulations the FCC put in place around 2010 that said, okay, you can't be doing that, you can't be restricting access to any websites, all you cable, DSL, internet providers out there. Like, just put the image in your head, like maybe Verizon, Comcast, Time Warner Cable, Cox Communications, etc. And the different providers that have either usually a monopoly or an oligopoly, I'm not oligopoly, I, I mean like two providers in one market, of internet service. I'm sorry, I should be able to say that word. But, the point is, this regulation is a very good idea to keep the internet open and so I can access your website and any other website whether the cable company or your DSL or phone company likes them or not. We should, we should all be able to access these different websites. And that's basically, that's fair because they're all on the internet and we're buying the same service. We may be using different providers but the promise is that we should be able to access the entire internet not just, just what they like on the internet. And that's what net neutrality is all about. Now this court decision has to do with Verizon. They made a lawsuit against the FCC. This got up in the chain and now it's gotten all the way up to U.S. District Court of Appeals in Washington, D.C. where it has been ruled on today that their regulations aren't, are overextending of their power. The reason why they said this was overextending is because you have a choice of, cable, of internet providers. Now yes, this is true in some ways. Technically, you can choose between satellite internet, which most of the time is not the best option. It's not bad. Not everything to do with satellite internet is bad. But again, you also have latency issues. So for many people, especially people who do lots of intense internet activities such as gaming, which requires very low latency or maybe stock trading and different things. There's all sorts of things I can name, but I can't think of everything. They may need a better connection than that. We have dial-up, which for most internet users wouldn't be very suitable for us content consumers of the age. So that usually leaves you with two, maybe three options if you're lucky. That's cable internet. Those are usually speeds between 3 megabits and 100 megabits. Although you, sometimes you may get the speeds you're promised, sometimes not. DSL, that's usually about 1 in 10 megabits. That's usually not too bad, but all depends. And if you're lucky and you live in a, in a market that has a good amount of competition, you also have a third provider, which is usually either a secondary cable operator or, or fiber to the home. The point I'm trying to make is that there's not many providers that provide high-speed internet that's fast enough for most of our America's internet consumers. There's problems where this infrastructure often may not work properly, or even if you're paying for speeds such as 15 or 30 megabits, you may not always be getting your speeds. So, to say that there is enough competition on paper is true, realistically speaking, is not true. Because according to broadband guidelines, it's about 5 megabits or higher for a broadband connection, or should be fast enough to surf the internet reasonably well. And that leaves about maybe two or three providers, if you're lucky. DSL, if you live in a fast enough place, a place that has fast enough access, which many DSL customers are stuck on connections three megabits and lower. Cable internet, and if you're lucky, fiber. <laughs> that does not sound like very much competition. For most people who need fast internet, that would probably either be cable or fiber. And you can't really count fiber in all markets, so... For many people, you really only have one provider <laughs> you can go to that will provide reasonably fast speeds to be able to do what you're doing. And the problem is, if you don't have net neutrality there, if the FCC can't 
enforce this net neutrality. If this one provider doesn't like a website, like uh, e the Electron Frontier Foundation, the EFS is a wonderful foundation that helps to provide support for expanding expanding equal access to the internet, etc., etc., and various other websites, they can simply block them if they don't like what they're saying or about their market and they want to keep things a certain way. Or other websites. This is just theoretical. I'm not saying they will or anything. But they could theoretically say, or they could also say, well, look, I know you like Netflix, right? If you pay us, uh, like, a few dollars more a month, uh, how, many, how much you got there? Ten, twenty dollars? This isn't ten, twenty dollars. This is, like, one dollar bills. If you pay us, like, ten, twenty dollars more a month, we'll give you access to Netflix, uh, Hulu Plus, all your favorite internet streaming services, like, wink, wink, nut, nut. You know, yeah, I know you like those, you know? Those are really nice services you got there. And I like you having those. You want... But if you want to, you have to pay more for them. Or if they don't like those services, they can simply block them and say, nope, you have to use a uh, mega cast super streaming. That's the only streaming website you can use. You can't use Netflix, can't use Hulu Plus. And this is where the problem comes in. Now, people, a lot of people are saying, oh, this is the end of net neutrality. There's no, This is not coming back. And I don't agree with that. Simply, this case could easily be appealed to the Supreme Court, which it most likely will. And even if the Supreme Court rules that this is unconstitutional, we can always amend the Constitution. Now, that is not an easy process. I'm saying this casually, but it's not casual to amend the Constitution. But I do feel like this is an important issue of our age, one of many, the freedom of information. We're very f thankful to live in an age where we can access this information. As recent as 30 or 40 years ago, a small group of companies controlled almost all of the media in the United States, and to a much of an extent the world, and could control what we saw. And this really did allow them to limit what we saw, and there are many examples of when they did do this. The internet provides a place where multiple content creators like me, others, go out there, share what's going on around them, and share their views on it, whether these companies like that or not. That's what is so great about this and why we should fight to keep our net neutrality. <laughs> these are just my thoughts on it. Thanks for watching, you guys. And yes, I did get a haircut, as you saw in my last vlog. Oh, man, that was a filled-up video. I just got into, like, rant mode when I was going into that. But I, I feel like that's true. I do feel like we should all have be able to fairly and equally access this information, especially if you're paying for, to access the Internet. You should be able to access the Internet, not what megacast that's a fake corporation name but we just imagine a local cable provider dsl fiber any isp in general not what megacast or whoever else uh you're paying your hard-earned what's who's on this dollar bill george washington's to to get internet service in your neighborhood <laughs> these are just my thoughts guys if you guys have any thoughts be sure to leave them in the comments below and oh my gosh thanks for watching you guys you guys are awesome i hope to see y'all right back here in the very near future who said that is that john john paula i don't know <laughs> anyways guys peace out